One of the things I've been wanting to develop on this channel is a series about how to debug your code and how to learn more about debugging skills because I think it's a very important part of the art of programming. Yet, I don't see many people talking about this subject. I think it's because most of the people I've met really hate debugging, but the thing is is that it's uh, like 80% of the job of a programmer, so <laughs> we should probably talk about it. Now, in this case, I want to talk about UML, which stands for Unified Modeling Language. And that technically doesn't have anything to do with debugging, because it's supposed to be a way of representing code in, you know, a visual format so that you can design the architecture and prototype the structure of your code, even going as far as wanting to generate the code from these uh, visual graphics. But in my case, what I like to do is use a subset of these standards to model code that already exists so that I can more easily debug the flow or the structure of some piece of code. For example, when I designed the electronic warfare update, I mentioned in the previous video I made about this that I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to add this to the whole flow of the damage calculations. Because even though I designed this, it's slowly become quite a complicated system with, you know, area of effect damage and multiple targets and firing outside of your uh, view range and all these kind of things made it so that I had trouble to keep in my head everything that was going on when the player clicks the fire button. So I made a sequence diagram that shows the flow of events and method calls from the moment the player clicks the fire button until all the damages are resolved. And this helped me figure out exactly where I needed to add the dialogue options for the electronic warfare so that it would fit perfectly in the flow of everything. Sequence diagrams are awesome when you need to really model the flow of a specific sequence of events inside your code. But sometimes you're more interested in the general structure of the classes and their interconnection of how they depend on each other. In this case, I like to model things in a class diagram or a component diagram. Look, I I'm not going to say I'm following the specification of the UML to the letter because I'm not. It's a very complicated system and that's not the point. The point is really to just show the important connections that I need for whatever I'm doing right now. So it's a very simplified view of the whole system. For example, here's a class diagram of some of the important parts of Solar Rogue. Now, normally I would have only modeled the part that I'm interested in, but for the purpose of this video, I try to model a bit of everything. But for example, I might have modeled only the blue section to illustrate the relationship between the different UI element in Solar Rogue. In the case of the UI, for example, I didn't document any of the insides. I didn't put any of the methods or the attributes. I only illustrate the relationship between the different classes using different types of line. For example, I have a full arrow to show the inheritance properties and I have a plain line to show composition and a dashed line to show weak references. So this way, for example, you can see how my custom lists and my buttons all inherit from the default look for all my dialogues and windows and how the UI behavior is responsible for pushing and popping the different UIs and dialog windows. Sometimes I'm trying to track a little bit more in detail which methods is using which objects. So in this case, I'll take the time to list some of the methods and attributes of a given class. Like in the behavior section, I'm listing a few of the most important methods for each of the behavior so that you have a better idea of how each of those relate to the whole thing. For example, in the level loader behavior, you can see that it's responsible for saving and loading using the save and load methods. Another example here is I tried showing the relationship between the shortcut manager and the whole UI stack. So for example, you can see that the UI behavior is responsible for pushing and popping um, dialogues and that the dialogue is responsible for registering and setting the shortcuts and the shortcut manager is responsible for managing the key inputs and triggering the uh, proper 
events that will in turn be listened to by the uh, responsible behaviors that will trigger the rest of the code. And that's how the user inputs are handled in Solar Rogue. Even though most well-documented projects and library will list the hierarchy of all their objects and structure, you don't often see diagram explaining the flow of data throughout a library. Uh, there's a few exceptions, for example, the great project Godot has really good documentation and sometimes they'll include a little diagram showing some of the flow. For example, I really often refer to the flow of the inputs in the input documentation of the Godot engine because it's helped me often understand which method I should use to, for example, update the camera or to uh, handle uh, shortcut keys and in inputs in my shortcut manager. That's why I think learning to read and write these kind of diagram is really important to become better at uh, debugging and understanding uh, other people's code or even your own code after like a couple of months. There's hundreds if not thousands of apps that will let you model these kind of diagrams but uh, the one I personally use is called UMLet and I like it because it's kind of open source, lightweight and very simple, but it does everything I need. And the only thing you need to have installed is Java and then you can pretty much run it from everywhere. And that's gonna be it for this week. If you've ever used UML, let me know in the comment section which software you use so I can try it and see if it's better than UMLet. And until the next time, see you all in my next video, bye.